Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope everybody, Ya Rabb, is doing well, inshallah, and you're keeping warm in this freezing weather. So, I want to share something with you. This past fall, alhamdulillah, Ya Rabb, I was very blessed and I studied aqidah. And to be honest with you, I was very, very intimidated because aqidah is very like hard, it's dry, it's a heavy, it's heavy material. And I'm more about like spiritual stuff. I want something, you know, a hadith that I'll listen to, will change my heart, will change me, you know, stuff like that. But anyway, I was like, you know, tawakkal ala Allah, let me just do it and get over and done with it. So the reason why I'm saying this is because, um, or why I decided to do this, our sheikh was telling us like, you know, growing up in a non-Muslim country, you know, our kids are exposed to so much more and you could be teaching them about religion, Islam and this and that, and then they end up going to college and they take this whole classroom about creationism or evolution or whatever it is. And it, they could come back and tell you, well, you know, it makes sense to me. And you should be able as a parent to sit down with them, discuss with them, not just yell like, oh, astaghfirullah, this is haram. No, you should be able to like, you know, um, address what they're thinking in, in a civilized way and convince them, right? With proof from the Quran and the Sunnah and so on and so forth, right? Because times have changed and they did not grow the same way that we grew up. So that's the first reason why you should study Aqidah. Unless you're growing up in a Muslim country where Tawheed is like 100% and they hear that then it's not something they're going to be really exposed to. The other reason why I think everybody should study Aqidah or at least as part of Aqidah um, is the 99 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, again, as I was telling you, I went into this, like, you know, I know it's hard, it's dry, I'm not going to be moved in any way. I'm just going to memorize this, learn it, understand it, and be done with it. But subhanAllah, we memorize the 19 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We chant them with our kids so they can memorize them. We hear them a million times, but we don't really sit and think and understand the meaning behind them. When you understand the meanings of Allah, the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Wallahi, wallahi, it will change the way you look at everything. When you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a razzaq, when you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a wakil, the one you can rely on, he's the sustainer, the one you rely on, al mateen, the one you can rely on, al qawi in giving, or you know, al qawi, sorry, in giving, al mateen on relying on, al hasib, all these names are a medicine to your heart. You will come out like with the concept of like don't worry and just be happy basically wallahi and i'm not saying this just to be funny but it's really when you have that understanding of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these are all his qualities subhanahu wa ta'ala and his attributes what am i worrying about and why should i be even worrying i should have haqqa tawakkul on him subhanahu wa ta'ala right now Names usually, or the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they sometimes come in groups, they come in complementary opposites, and sometimes they come in pairs to complement each other as well. And I want to share with you one name that I never, ever, ever, ever thought about in that way. I heard it a million times, I've repeated it a million times with my kids, but I never understood that this is what it meant. And I'm going to share with you the two names that come together. And it talks about, or the capabilities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. Al-Mubdi' Al-Mu'id. The originator, the what? The restorer. The originator is when he creates something for the first time, like who? Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam, right? Creation for the first time. al muaid which is the one I love that name, and I'm sure you're going to love that name as well once you understand what it means, is the restorer. As in what? And Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam. He orders him to go on the ship or the boat with what pairs of everything, the believers who are following him, seeds and whatnot, and then what happens? Total flooding of the earth. No form of creation except what Sayyidina Nuh and the people were with him. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does what? He restores life on earth again. He restores creation, right? He has Sayyidina Nuh to come down and start what, planting the seeds and the animals and whatnot. And life is recreated again. And proof of that is that you're listening to me and I'm talking to you right now, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the restorer. Now, how does that relate to us in our daily lives? If you lost a job, if you lost wealth, if you lost love in your marriage, if your kids have grown up and you've lost that beautiful relationship with them, you've lost a child, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-mu'id. It gives you hope or give those who have lost that Allah can restore back to you what you have lost. Sayyidina Ayyub alayhi salam, he lost his wealth, his health, his children, his friends, everybody, everything. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did what? 
He restored everything again. Inna dhalika ala Allah yaseer. Allah is capable. It's easy for Allah. If Allah created me and you, He cannot restore back to us what He, what was, you know, what we lost. Think about it. You just have to have that yaqeen in your heart. You have to have that trust and faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable of bringing back into your life what was taken from you. If there's good in it, right? Sometimes things are taken from us as a test. And sometimes because it's not good for us and we just don't see it, right? Raise your hands tonight and call on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Mu'id, Ya Mu'id, Ya Allah, Ya Restorer. Restore such and such to me. And if that certain things doesn't come back, believe me, wallahi, with the dua, Allah will heal that pain of what, or feel that feeling of emptiness of whatever it is that you lost. Allah, inshallah, will what, that you give you like awad or ta'weed, right? Allah will re kind of like recompensate you in another way or restore to you what was lost. Okay? Have haqq tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and really understand the naming. What Allah is al muaid He can bring back what was taken, right? And please, please, if you do have a chance or the time to study the names of Allah, even if you take one name a month, I'm not going to tell you every week, if you can take one name and just read about it in detail, Wallahi, you'll be so much more happier in your life. And you'll look at things so, so differently and so much more calmer and just a healing, a healing for your heart. So inshallah, try to take that initiative and start looking at the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may you Rabb, see the beauty of those names in your daily life, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.